Ah, there we are. All right, so I'm going to go back to the front here. So day one, we did similarity. I marked those questions with S's. Day two, trig was the main thing there. I marked those with T's. So day three, which is today, I'm going to mark those. That's like quads and polygons. I'm going to mark those with Q's when we go through there. Okay. So if you look at the front page, we've done all these questions already, right? One through five, the first three were trigonometry, four and five were similarity, so we can skip that front page. And we'll jump right here to number six, which we have not done yet, and that's because it does deal with quadrilaterals. How do you know, Mr. Widmeyer? Well, if you look down here at the answers, we're dealing with, you know, kind of our quadrilateral names there. So that deals, that's from that unit, okay? So number six says, given the coordinates A, zero, two, B, 4, 2, C, negative 3, negative 4, and D, negative 7, negative 4, what is not a possible name for the figure? So we want to identify what, what, ca what we cannot call that figure. That's the answer here. So um, what might be a good strategy to kind of utilize here? Graphic. Yeah, graph it. Exactly right. It's like they're almost telling you what to do with giving you the coordinates right there. So let's graph this. So zero to make sure you graph it accurately too, right? Because otherwise it could be big trouble. And then D. <coughs> All right. So I've plotted my points. All right. How should I go about connecting these points? Can I just kind of connect them willy nilly? Like, can I just do like A to C to D to A back to B like that? I mean, how should we go about connecting these points? What's that, Maria? Yeah, A, B, C, D. Now, the question, to be fair here, the question does not tell us the name of the quadrilateral. In some cases, we could, they could call this quadrilateral like C, A, D, B or something like that. And obviously then that would make not a uh, shape that we're used to seeing. But we could probably assume here it's in alphabetical order, so we should probably just put them in alphabetical order. So yeah, so we'll connect A to B, B to C, C to D, and then D and A connected as well. <coughs> okay. So there's our shape. All right, so looking at that, again, we're trying to come up with which one of these is not a possible name for the figure. So John, letter A, can we call this thing a polygon? Yes. Absolutely. So A is not the answer because we're looking for something we cannot call the shape. What about B? Can we call this thing a parallelogram? Uh, yes. It looks like it, doesn't it? How can we maybe check it just to make sure? Um, mm-hmm. So the slope from A to B and from D to C, that's pretty clear. It's zero, right? You're not rising at all. But it's a run of four, so it's zero over four, which is just zero. Same thing there from D to C. From C to B, I'm going to go ahead and count that slope here just real quick, just so we can see. It goes up one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it goes um, rise of six, run of seven. And then D to A, let's see if that's the same thing. So up one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there you go. The slopes are equal there, and those are clearly uh, both horizontal slopes, so it can't be B. Because that is a parallelogram, we're looking for the thing that it is not, what we cannot call this thing. So, uh, right, so let's see. So, uh, so John, what do you say? What, is it a quadrilateral? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a quadrilateral. So again, we can call it a quadrilateral. So then D, it must be rhombus. And why isn't this thing a rhombus, John? Because uh, not all the sides are equal. Not all the sides are equal. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, Michael, what's another way you could check that? Besides not all the sides being equal, what's true about the diagonals of a rhombus? The diagonals have to be equal. Or perpendicular. There you go, right. That's a rectangle perpendicular is, is equal. Right, perpendicular, right. So we, we could, if we wanted to, to really convince ourselves here, find the slope from C to A. So we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 1, 2, 3. So CA's slope, and I'm going to run out of space there, is 6 over 3, which is the same thing as uh, 2 over 1. And then D to B, it's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so the slope of D, B is 6 over 11. Those are clearly not perpendicular, right? They're not opposite reciprocals. And so, oh, that should be a negative 2 over 1, sorry. Um, wait, no. That's positive slope, too. Yeah, they're not opposite reciprocals. They're both positive, and they're clearly not reciprocals of each other there. So that means this thing is not a rhombus. Okay, so that's the idea. Very good. 
All right, number seven. Let's go to, so uh, Julie, number seven. Each diagonal of a quadrilateral bisects a pair of opposite angles of the quadrilateral. What is the most precise name for the quadrilateral that we can give to it there? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Parallelogram, not necessarily true. Rectangle, not necessarily true. Trapezoid, not necessarily true, but cer uh, certainly true for C. So that's right, good job, Julie. All right, uh, number eight. ABCD is a parallelogram with the measure of angle B equal to 6x degrees and the measure of angle D equal to 2x plus 40 degrees. Find the measure of angle D, A, B. Evan? You got 120. Wow! Did you just guess that? No. Mental math? No. Okay, so what'd you do? So with measure of angle B and measure E, you have to assume that these are in order. Like, alphabetical. Ah, okay. Uh, then and 6x is equal to uh, 2x plus 40. Yeah, so, and if, let me just pause right there, because you're right, but I just want to kind of draw a picture because that can be difficult to see if, if there's not a picture, for me at least, I like to have a picture drawn, but you're absolutely right. You're able to tell that just from looking at the order there, and that's great. I like pictures. That's why I like geometry. So, B is 6x, okay? D is 2x plus 40. All right, and so yes, Evan knows because the shape's a parallelogram. Okay, that these two angles must be congruent. All right, we're told that ABC is a parallelogram. Did I have to put? So I had to put the names, the orders, letters in order. A, B, C, D. Did I have to put A here? No, yeah, I could have put it here and then B, C, D that way. I could have put A here, put B, C, D that way. That's that doesn't really. I mean, as long as we're in the right order, it doesn't really matter where I put those angles. That might mean I didn't draw this to scale, but that's okay still. So anyway, Evan was right. 6x equals 2x plus 40. Sorry, Evan, and now continue where you were going uh, from that. And you subtract 2x, you get 4x plus 40, and that's just x equals 10. x is 10. Okay, but then why didn't you say that answer is c, 10? Because you have to multiply 6x of 6 times 10 with 6c, same with 2x plus 40, which is also 6c. Okay, so that makes this angle equal to 60 degrees and that angle to 60 degrees. So then why isn't the answer 60? Uh, add this together, you get 120, and then Oh, okay, because what are we trying to find here? D A B. Okay. So you can see here, folks, that the people that wrote this question, right, they're trying to throw you off. They're saying that ah, some students when they solve for X, that's what they think the answer is. And so there they put it right there. C is ten, but that's not right. Okay, we're not done yet. Then they said, ah, some students when they plug back in, they'll plug it in, they'll get sixty and say, aha, that's the answer. And again, and that's not right because you didn't answer the question. You're supposed to find the measure of angle DAB, which is this angle. All right. So Evan knows that all the angles in a parallelogram or any quadrilateral, convex quadrilateral, have to add to 360. And so he was right to do um, 360 minus both those 60s there, which is 120, to get us uh, 240. And then you could divide by 2 because what's true about angle A and angle C there? They're going to be equal. So he's divide 240 divided by 2 you get 120 degrees. Okay. What's another way we get that 120 besides using the fact that all the angles have to 360? Mary? Um, angle B and angle A are supplementary. Exactly right, yes. And a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. Think of it this way, right? We have parallel lines crossed by a transversal. These are co-interior angles, so they're going to be supplementary as well. But your method is no less you know, uh, correct for what you did there. Still works. Good job. And Mary, good job there too. Mm -hmm. Good to see that. All right, questions on. Six, seven, or eight? Nope. All right, that's it for the quadrilateral questions, except for the free response. <laughs> okay, so you have to go through that one. But that was it for the multiple choice. So that's all we got to worry about there. And then we're going to hit this um, free response right here, okay? So, <coughs> all right. So 13 says, complete the following questions given the points. A at 1, negative 1, and B at 3, 1. So you'll notice they were very kind. They already plotted those points for us. How nice. And letter A, though, says that we want to find the length of AB. So there's segment AB. How can we go about finding this length? Let's go to Julia. What do you say there, Julia? How can we find the length between those two points? Yeah, okay, so we have the distance formula, but that's kind of a complicated formula to figure, to remember. Okay, I'll write it up here. For those of you that prefer just memorizing a formula, you could use distance equals the square root of the difference of the x-coordinate squared plus the difference of the y-coordinate squared. Okay, that's one way to do it. 
But some people also, well, the slope is not necessarily the distance. The slope is like the, how it's like slanted. So you do use the slope to help describe it. So to find the actual distance of it in terms of the units there, um, we could use distance formula. And also Pythagorean theorem. And I feel like in the past, maybe in middle school, did you guys use like Pythagorean theorem to like find distance between two points? Okay. Michael's saying yes, maybe. Do you remember that at all, Julia? Not really. So if you look here, all right, if you look at this, if I were to kind of like, and let me kind of zoom in some more because maybe it's like really crazy out there. Okay. I can kind of like put in some dotted lines here and you can see that I now have this like little right triangle here from A to B. You see that? Okay. What's the length of this leg right here, Julia? Two. Two, yeah. What's the length of this leg? Two, Two as well. All right. And so then to find the hypotenuse, we can just do... 2 squared plus 2 squared equals, and again, we want to find that distance, so we'll call that x. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's off the screen. Oh, x squared. Thank you. Sorry, x squared. Oh, 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 Pythagorean theorem is what you meant. Then. Okay, making the triangle. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's using the rise and the run. Okay, I gotcha. All right, so then we get here 4 plus 4, which is 8, equals x squared. And then what, Julia, do we do here? Uh, Ooh, careful. It's x squared. How do you cancel out a square? Mm, square root. The square root symbol, right? Okay. So x equals the square root of 8. Now, it doesn't say that we need to put it in simplest radical form, but let's just go ahead and do it because... Why not? All right. So, Julia, do any perfect squares divide 8? So, let's see. Our perfect squares are 1 is a perfect square. What's the next perfect square after 1? So, that's, so 1 squared gives us 1. What's 2 squared? 4. 4 is a perfect square, then. And 4 does divide 8. So, that's the same thing as the square root of 2 times the square root of 4. Okay. What is the square root of 4, then? It is... Two. And so we're left with two square roots of two for that length there, x. Okay. So that's the length of AB. It's two times the square root of two. If you want to do it in your calculator, it doesn't say you can't, so you could just type in the square root of eight in your calculator if you want to and just get, to just get the decimal if you prefer. Okay. But I like this because it's a precise answer. Whenever you do the decimal, you're going to have to round it. So. If you do the decimal, um, what should you round to? I guess the tenth place, yeah. But again, I would really prefer, and it's uh, for those of you planning on going on to Algebra 2, Honors, Pre-Calculus, Calculus, I would really suggest you challenge yourself to do the simplest radical term. Unless the directions specify, use decimals, try and use the simplest radical term, because anytime you use a decimal, you're now rounding and you're cutting off uh, precision. But here, this is the exact precise answer. So again, if you plan on going on, I would really recommend you practice doing it this way. Okay. Um, does anyone want to see the distance formula method? We're all okay. It's just plugging in the x coordinate. So you do 1 minus 3 quantity squared plus negative 1 minus 1 quantity squared. Add them together and then square root the answer. You're going to end it with square root of 8. Spoiler alert. Okay. Square root of 8 and that implies to 2 root 2. It'll be the same value. Okay. Um, will I give you the distance formula on the crest on Friday? No. So if you're going to choose to do it this way, you will need to know this formula. Okay? It's not a bad formula to know, in all honesty, right? I mean, you will see it later. So if you want to get it down, that's fine. If you would prefer to just use, like, the method that Maria called, you know, the slope method here, you can do it that way, too. Okay? So I'll, I'll explain that later. All right, letter B. Plot and label coordinates C and D so that A, B, C, D is a square and points are located at C, 1, comma, Y. So C's, C had better have a 1 for its X coordinate and D needs to have a 1 for its Y coordinate. So where are these points going to go? All right, let me see. Let me call on someone here first. Hang on, guys. Uh, so let me give Mary a try here. So Mary, where should those points go? So point C needs to have a coordinate of 1, comma, blank. So it needs to be, it needs to have an X coordinate. And the point should be plotted somewhere along this line that has X coordinates of 1. So where is it going to go? Can you eyeball that and see it?
So what, one thing we do here, Mary, is to use our slopes, right? Because we know that a square has to have perpendicular sides, right? So what's the slope of A to B? One. Yeah, it's up one, right one, right? So, and then for the square then, we need the opposite reciprocal of that. So what's this opposite reciprocal of one over one? Negative one over one. So from B, let's go negative one, uh, well, we want to go down one, right one. We want to go left one, up one. So there's our negative slope. That's not quite a square, but if we go left one, up one once more, right there. Okay, C is going to have the coordinate 1, 3. Okay, that will get us what we need there. Okay, and then where's D got to go? Yeah, negative Let's see here. Negative one, one, exactly right. To kind of make that a square. Okay. There you go. All right. <coughs> All right. The reason why they gave us the x coordinate and the y coordinate here is because there otherwise there'd be a couple options. For example, I could have put C and D down here to make a square if I had wanted to, right? We could have put C and D down in this area to make that square. But instead they chose to have us put the square up there, which is fine. So letter C, using the properties of a square, explain how you determine the locations of points C and D. And so this is where we want to kind of use our argument for why we know this thing is now a square. Okay, so how do you know this shape is a square? What can we do? Or how have we kind of shown things are a square in the past? Yeah, Stephanie? So... Okay, so we could do the length of all the sides and see if they're even. That would show that it is a what? So a parallelogram, it would be a parallelogram, but more specifically, it would be a rhombus, because rhombuses have all four sides equal. So you could show the side lengths for all four sides. That would make it a rhombus, and then we would need to further show uh, another something else to then show that it is a, um, a square. That's one way to go about doing it. We could do the distance for all four of these sides. That would make it a rhombus. And then how can we show it was a rectangle then, too? Mm -hmm. Just like pick, find the slope maybe between two sides and show that they're opposite reciprocals, in which case then you now have a rectangle and a rhombus, which then makes it a square. So that's one way to do it. Yep. Other ideas about how we could show this thing as a square besides using all the side lengths? Remember in the past, we did the slopes. We first showed this thing was like a parallelogram, right, by showing the opposite sides were parallel. So we could find the slopes of this, 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 and this side and show that opposite sides are parallel. Then the whole, what's that? Yes, and then we could also find the slopes of the diagonals, then say that they're going to be perpendicular, making it a rhombus. And then we could show that one of these pairs of sides are perpendicular, showing it's a rectangle, and something that's both a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus, therefore, must be a square. So lots of different options there, okay? You know, obviously not anything, but you can have a couple options you want to go with. I'm going to do that one because that's what we've done in the past, but Stephanie's method would work too, for sure, if you just want to find the distance of all four sides there. So let's do it, let's do it the, uh, the way I was saying earlier there. So the slope, right, of A, B the slope of BC, slope of CD, ooh, and then the slope of DA. Okay, so AB slope is up to right to, so 2 over 2, I'll just call that. I'm not going to bother simplifying it just yet. Um, BC slope is up to left to, so 2 over negative 2. The slope of CD is also well, down to left 2, so I'm going to just call that 2 over 2 again. And then DA slope is also uh, down 2 over 2 like that. Okay? So very clearly here is AB parallel to DC. Yeah, so you can say AB is parallel to CD. Okay, and then BC is parallel to DA. All right. <clears throat> and so that makes it a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. Okay. 
Also, do we have any perpendicular sides here? We have some opposite reciprocal slopes. You can pick anything, right? For example, A, B, and B, C. 2 over 2, reciprocal of that is 2 over 2, but then it's negative. So, yep, they're, op they're perpendicular, so we can just say that, that A, B is perpendicular to B, C. And so, therefore, it's a rectangle. You only need to show one right angle there. Okay. And then finally, CA and DB are also perpendicular there. Okay, their slopes, they're not opposite reciprocals, but one's vertical, one's horizontal. So CA is perpendicular to DB. Okay. And so therefore the shape is a rhombus because the um, diagonal is perpendicular. And so therefore ABCD is a square. Okay, so there it is. All right. So again, that's why we've seen that before, right? Letter C. All right, let's do these last two here, get these knocked out. So letter D says, on the coordinate plane above, perform the similarity transformation xy to negative x, negative y, to 3x, 3y, and label the image A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Although I think that should be probably be A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, D prime prime. Is that what you're going to ask about, Michael? Yeah. I think that's a typo. And so again, we're supposed to find then A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, D prime prime. Okay. <coughs> All right. So how can we go about kind of doing this then? Um, let's see. We'll pick someone that's here. So Maria, how can we kind of go about doing this transformation here? Yes, exactly right, Maria. We're going to write out all those points. All right. So I'm going to like rewrite it down here where I have some space. Actually, I shouldn't do it this high. I'll go a little bit lower. So I'll rewrite it down here where I have some space. We're going to take x, y, and we're going to make it negative x, negative y first. And then we're going to make it 3x, 3y. All right, so a's coordinates we already have as 1, negative 1. b's coordinates we have already as 3, 1. We figured out c and d's coordinates. Yeah. These coordinates are negative 1, 1. Okay. So Maria, A prime, what's that going to become? So negative one, one, yeah, positive one, very good, 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 good. And how about B prime, what's its coordinates becoming? Negative three, negative one, and C prime? Okay, and D prime? Good. All right, and then let's also go ahead and have you do A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime and then D prime prime. All right, hang on a second. Sorry, I'm. You're too fast for me. All right. All right so what would A prime prime be there, uh, Maria? Sorry. I got three, three. Right. So we're just going to multiply the x, the old x and y's of A prime by three. Okay. Good. B prime prime. Negative nine. Negative three. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, I was wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, C prime prime? Uh huh. And then D prime prime. Good. Okay. And so those are the new coordinates. So we can write those down. Negative 3, 3. Negative 9, 3. Negative 9, negative 3. I did it again. Uh, negative 3, negative 9. And then 3, negative 3. Okay? Those are your four points. All right, it did say to perform the similarity transformation, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll plot these points, too. I'll do it in a different color, though, so that way it kind of stands out. Ooh, except I don't have any other colors up here, so I've got to run that. Okay, so we plot these points, so negative 3, 1, 2, 3... That's A prime prime. B prime prime is negative 9, negative 3. C 
prime prime is negative three, negative nine, and then d prime prime is three, negative one, two, three. All right, and so there's the new square there. Okay, the similar square. <coughs> Oh, it's there, I promise. Okay, so there it is plotted. All right. Finally, whew, letter E, last one here. Calculate the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Okay, so how might we go about doing, how do you find the perimeter of a shape, Keegan? What does that mean you need to do? How do you find the perimeter of a shape? What does that mean you need to do? Yeah, we want to find the distance, the length, the total length around the outside of the shape. Now, we've already kind of done some work for that, right? Because we say way back here in letter A that the length of AB is 2 squared to 2. So from A to B is the length of 2 squared to 2. Since this is a square, what does that mean CB's length is going to be? And the other two will also be that way, right? Yeah. So then an easy way to do the perimeter here would be to do what? Uh, 2 to the 4th. So, not. well, not to the 4th power. It's, these all have a uh, 2 root 2, and we would add them up. So 4 of the 2 root 2? Yeah. yeah, so 4 times 2 square roots of 2 is the perimeter. Oops, I'm doing a different color here. Well, I guess I might as well just continue because that will look weird if I change the color. So the perimeter of A, B, C, D is equal to 4 times 2 square roots of 2, which we multiply that, the 4 and the 2 multiply to make what they're keeping? 8. Yeah, 8 square roots of 2. So there's the perimeter of A, B, C, D. How does this perimeter compare to the perimeter of A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, D prime prime? What do you think there, Keegan? Okay. Well, how do we get that A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, D prime prime? The transformation there, that's right. And how, how much it got, and if you look here at the result, it's bigger than the original, right? Yeah. Why is it bigger? We multiply by three. So what do you think is going to be the, how will that, how will our old perimeter in the red shape compare to the perimeter of this blue shape? Uh, multiply by three. Yeah, exactly right. Each one of these sides is three times as big, so the perimeter is going to be three times as much, okay? So perimeter of A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, D prime prime, is going to be 3 times 8 square root of 2, which is then 24 square root of 2. Yep. Okay? So the image, or the image's perimeter, will be 3 times as big as the original. Okay? I feel like we talked about that before, right? We talked about like the scale factor for the areas versus the scale factor for the perimeters. Did we talk about that? I feel like we did. I can't remember now. Okay. So anyway, there it is. Okay. Questions on any of that?